So the relationship between the cultural mandate, so-called in Genesis 1.28, and uh, the Great Commission, um, really I think cultural mandate is fine, but it's much more than a cultural mandate because uh, it, it says that God blessed them and uh, then commanded them to um, rule and subdue and increase and multiply and fill the earth. Now, if they're going to fill the earth, what are they filling the earth with? Well, themselves, of course, but who are they? They're image bearers. It's just been said uh, in, in chapter 1, verse uh, 26 and um, uh, 27 that they're made in the image of God. So they're image bearers. They're filling the earth with the glory of God. They're going to be reflecting God's glory as they fill the earth so that when they finally fill it, the whole earth will be filled with the glory of God. So that's not just a cultural mandate, it is, but it's much more. It's also a spiritual mandate. Both go together, and so they should in our own lives as well. And uh, so that our, our cultural activities, uh, not just our activities at church or our activities, quote, unquote, uh, of witnessing, but our whole life is to reflect the, the person of God. And that itself is something uh, not only by word then, but also by our lifestyle reflecting the character of God that will influence people toward Him. And so I think that the first great commission actually is Genesis 1.28 because it's not just a cultural commission, it's a, it's a missions uh, commission ultimately uh, through which both through culture and through um, our, our godly uh, lives uh, and words we uh, we spread the, the Word of God and witness to Him.